Hello students, today we are going to discuss about the acquisition of resources and organization of resources for efficient use. This lesson was basically planned to impart knowledge to the catering staff about the important resources that are necessary for an actual food catering service. It also imparts knowledge about how to obtain the resources that are necessary for the establishment and educate the managerial staff about the importance of each resource and the efficient use of these resources which can be used for a longer period of time. Now before we go to the different resources, let us understand the term resources. It is defined as those factors available to a catering manager for the production and service of food. And these are always limited for a number of reasons. Some are used up and finished with time. So they have to be continually generated to have constant supply. Others are gradually worn out in value and utility and needs to be constantly maintained till unfit for use and replaced when they become absolute. It is therefore evident that for an establishment to survive in its ever-changing and competitive environment, resources need to be utilized to their maximum because no resource can be increased indefinitely. There are eight resources identified in the catering management system that are very important. Now let us discuss these eight resources. The first resource is money. The goal of every food service establishment is to make profits. But before it can be achieved or this goal is achieved, there has to be money to invest and spend in order to acquire the other resources necessary for a production and service of food. It would therefore be appropriate to pinpoint briefly the methods by which an entrepreneur can raise the money for his or her establishment before the utilization aspect is considered. Some of the methods of raising money are like they one can borrow from any nationalized bank or government finance companies. They can join in partnership with other people who can share the investment in the business, purchase premises and equipment on a higher purchase basis which can be paid for or in installments after the establishment is in operation. The owner can also use up his or her savings initially till the establishment earns enough profit to pay back. But this is not a desirable practice if the loans can be raised at a reasonable interest rate. Having raised the money, it is important to pay it back at the earliest to minimize interest payments. In order to do this, it must be invested wisely in space, equipment, materials and other resources to get optimum return on investment. Making an investment decisions for catering establishments therefore must be based on certain general criteria like the area of the space within the building. They should be adequate to cope with the expected number of customers and the range of services to be offered whether it is for a short period of time or a long run. Next is the suitability. Each planned area in terms of design of equipment, furniture, fittings, structure, surfaces etc. should be suitable for the use by the staff and the customers. At the same time, it should provide an efficient, comfortable and safe working and dining environment. Next is the control system. Each part of the premises must provide the means for a built-in control system. In the case of food services, it amounts to watching relevant areas and instituting methods of control at the receiving, production, service and storage points. Control of operating and maintenance costs is important in all areas and for all equipment installed. These costs can be minimized by reducing man hours required for the operation by installing devices for routine jobs. If installations and spaces are designed 
for flexibility smaller are as are required for a number of different activities fewer equipment should be purchased if they are multi use pieces the durability of materials and the equipment naturally makes the money go further than if replacements are necessary earlier this implies continuity in the use of areas equipment and materials within an establishment any underutilization of these resources amounts to wastage this can be judged on the basis of how quickly after the investment is made can the establishment paid back with interest which has occurred the next is safety this is of prime consideration when making investment decisions and investing borrowed money the second resource is space now it is the second important resource of any catering establishment space being the most expensive resource requires thought for building upon it the main aim should be to utilize every square centimeters effectively spaces for food services may be acquired through auction hire purchase methods direct purchase of land or building as considered suitable in an existing building spaces may be renovated to provide arrangements of work areas with equipments which are placed as to establish a smooth work flow the environment should also be congenial and comfortable to work in the next resource is materials the materials commonly used in catering establishment are food materials the table linen kitchen cloths and cleaning materials first let us discuss about the various food materials which are used these vary from perishable fruits and vegetables to longer lasting grains pulses and water in addition a wide variety of processed packaged foods may be used depending on the nature of the establishment the menu and the establishment policy concerning cooking serving and buying methods when purchasing food materials certain points have to be considered so that there is maximum utility always buy seasonal foods as they are cheapest in season and also contain maximum flavor color and nutrients consider the percentage of edible portion when buying match quality variety and the pack of food materials to the end use for which it is purchased for example long grains should be used for the dishes where grains should be visible whereas broken rice can be used for dishes such as idli and dosa which will be cost effective always match quality purchase to storage areas and the type of storage also buy quantities in relation to the turnover of the food materials that is its rate of usage relate purchase list strictly to the menu and vice versa especially when perishable commodities are purchased in general food materials are best utilized when loss is prevented during receiving the storage preparation cooking serving and clearing the next one is cleaning material the cleaning materials are easily wasted especially in large establishments because they are not the focus of attention of most of the supervisors excess detergent and cleaning liquids are used for cleaning the kitchen area but when these are used in larger amounts than required they not only are wasted but also cause damage to the equipments cleaning material also include the mopping buckets mops and brooms multi purpose cleaning materials must be used which are cheaper and also are useful for many purposes the maximum utility of cleaning materials therefore lies in establishing correct methods of cleaning choosing simple familiar low cost equipment and using multi purpose detergents and avoiding wastage the next one is tableware the next group of materials needed in food service that is the tableware include linen and appointments linen includes the kitchen cloths dusters and the table linen these are required to be sterilized by boiling for half an hour in detergent water 
rinsing out the detergent and drying for reuse. Since these cloths need to be changed every day, the most efficient way to utilize them is to distribute two dusters and a kitchen cloth to each staff member working in the kitchens and the serving areas so that they are responsible for them and use their own cloths for their work only. In most of the food services where self-service is prevalent, paper napkins are now provided to avoid laundry expenses. The fourth resource is equipment. The important factor to be considered when investing on equipment is to ensure that its installation and utility outweigh the cost of labor, which would be required to do the job if the equipment was not installed. For maximum the use of equipment, therefore its selection must be made on the basis of the lower labor cost, making monotonous jobs quicker and easier, making the environment more attractive and clean, higher staff morale, increasing production capacity within the limited spaces available and having multi uses so that the equipment does not lie idle for a long period of time. The next resource is staff. Catering establishment being service oriented are totally dependent on the skills and the motivation of their staff and their willingness to make the establishment to succeed. No amount of mechanization give that personal touch to food which the production staff can or replace the smile so necessary to lure the customers to a food service center. Staffs in the food service establishment are at various levels of literacy and possess little to highly specialized skills according to the needs of the various staffs involved in food production and service. The next resource that we are going to discuss is time. All work, whatever its nature is, required to be performed within a restricted period of time. In the catering field, where food has to be served at particular timed and pressure built up for staff in kitchens, service and cleaning areas from time to time. Because of the peaks and troughs of activity which characterize the catering operations, a lot of this valuable resource gets wasted at different points in the production and service cycle. To avoid this, each person has to analyze their work to determine how well or otherwise time is being utilized. Time is one factor which is equally distributed to all people irrespective of their educational background, skills, nature and job. To maximize the utility of time, the managers need to have clear cut goals and plan out work in a sequence and in a detailed way. Always get priorities right so that the most important work is done first and the rest in the descending order. And also develop an easy management style so that the people gain confidence in the plan of action laid out for them. The next resource is energy. In any discussion of energy, it is important to distinguish between the fuel energy and human energy. In recent years, there was plenty availability of fuel resources, but at present these resources are minimized due to its much wastage. Today the situation is one of the high price shortage and sometimes even unavailability of the resources. These apply for both the fuel and even human resource. An indication of good utilization of fuel is evident from the overhead expenses of an establishment. The first step, any effort to save fuel in kitchens and service areas is to make the staff aware of the costs involved in the concrete terms. Some of the ways in which the fuel energy is wasted in kitchens are keeping ovens, stoves and grills switched on much before use. The fuel may be wasted if the equipment is lighted for a full heat irrespective of the size of the container. The use of high watt bulbs in areas where lesser lights can be used. 
keeping the exhaust fans running when the kitchen and service areas are not being used and also using colors on walls and ceilings which absorb light instead of reflecting it back. A look into the areas where human effort may be wasted is worthwhile even though the work people cannot be so closely and objectively monitored as that of physical structure and the arrangements. Therefore, a brief resume of factors which may affect the amount of energy people waste at work will help as guidelines for necessary action in program involving its conservation. These factors are planning layouts involving extra movements while working or strain in the performance of certain actions, uncomfortable working conditions leading to slow movements and fatigue, poorly scheduled work and time of the staff, poor supervision leading to wrong methods of working using up extra effort and time. The last resource is procedures. The procedures refer mainly to the methods followed in performing any particular task. The aim of every food service unit is to follow correct procedures for every job so that the results may be consistent in terms of quality, quantity, time and energy consumption. Some of the points to pay special attention while preparing foods for service are always collect all the equipments and ingredients required before starting work to save extra steps, light burners only after all the ingredients are ready for cooking, reduce the flame once boiling reaches to the boiling temperature and the size of the burner or flame should be proportionate to the utensils placed on it. The use of labor, saving devices, cuts down on effort if planned properly. In conclusion, resources are the very important aspects of any food catering service unit. Some resources serve the purpose for a longer time, such as space, land, humans, whereas some such as fuel, equipment are minimized on continuous usage and wastage. Hence, it is clear, therefore, that effective utilization of resources is simply a matter of good planning, organization and control, in short, that is effective management.